Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Continue on with some of the ahadith pertinent to Jumu'ah, the, the Salatul Jumu'ah prayer. We reached another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. which refers to the punishment with or the punishment of the person who speaks during the Juma prayer. We've already read some, uh, some of the ahadith that shows that it's permissible to speak to the khatib or the khatib to speak to the, uh, the people out of for if there's a real need to do so, a real benefit in doing so, you know, to prevent a harm or, or whatever the situation may be, out of a necessity of some sort. But this hadith right here of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to illustrate for us and tell us what is the general hukum or general ruling regarding speaking during the Juma prayer. Because, and why is this important? We take it for granted, a lot of us. But when you think about it, how many masajid and how many jumwas have you seen the, the people playing with their children, talking to their children to keep silent? In Medina, many times, in the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, in his masjid, I have witnessed countless times, every jumwa that I would attend almost, there would be some, some Muslims, unfortunately, due to their ignorance, would be having conversation during the jumwa prayer even talking on their cell phone. So it shows you there is a need to know this. This is al nafi this is beneficial knowledge, to know what is the hukum, what is the ruling? Is it permissible to speak during the Juma prayer? And this is, this is imperative for us to take a look at this. So let's hear what the, the, hadith, uh, the hadith of Abi Huraira, an Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and an Abiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, إذا قلت لصاحبك أنصت يوم الجمعة والإمام يخطب فقد لغت لغوت رواه بخاري ومسلم أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that if you say to your companion Keep silent during the Juma prayer while the Imam is addressing the, the, the people. Then you have uh, Lagot. And Lagot here means uh, you have done something that has no benefit. And in fact, it, it, it's harmful, it's wasteful speech. And this is the thing that harms your Jumwa. In general, this hadith refers to the greatness of the Jumwa prayer. And the sign and the and, and that Jumwa is one of the signs of, of the Muslims. Uh, of, the, of the deen of Islam, the religion of Islam, that, that the Juma prayer is one of the great signs of Islam. And that the Imam has khutbatan, you know, that there's two khutbas or two uh, ways that the Imam addresses the audience, then he sits down, then he addresses again, and that's the end of the Juma prayer. And that this has a certain manner, a certain set of manners to observe during the prayer or during the, uh, during the khutbah, during the preaching of the imam. That it is imperative to be silent. That is from the adab, from the manners of the Jumu'ah prayer, of the Jumu'ah, uh, the, the preaching. And this is in order that the people 
can of course hear the Imam, reflect on, on what he's saying, and gain the benefit of the prayer and the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we gain from this hadith, and, and for this reason, the Prophet وسلم, warned against uh, speaking during this time, even if it was something very minute. And that shows us that even as simple as you are trying to listen and you tell someone else to keep silent, that right there is something impermissible and something which can affect your Jumu'ah. So it shows you how serious it is. You're trying to do the right thing, and you're trying to command good, but in this time, in this particular circumstance or situation, it shows from this hadith and others that, that, that that's not even permissible. So that you should do your best, you must keep silent. Even someone, they come in the masjid and they give you salams while you are, this is also a, a mistake you see from some of our brothers who are unaware. They'll come into the masjid and then they might think you're harsh because you don't return the salams, but instead you're trying to preserve your jumu'ah. You're trying to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So even the most minute of speech can be uh, can negate or be harmful to a person's jumu'ah or make it naqs, make it uh, less in reward. And that's what we want to avoid. Some of the benefits of this hadith is it shows us the obligation to keep silent during when the uh, when the imam is given the khutbah on the day of Jumu'ah. And Ibn Abdul Bar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that it's ijma' that is a consensus of the ulama regarding that this is an obligation to keep silent. So that's consensus. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows that it is haram to speak while listening to the khatib when the khutbah is being the imam is, is given the khutbah when he's preaching and that it negates so that it is impermissible there another benefit of this hadith is that there is the exception to this is when as we mentioned prior to this hadith when addressing the imam out of necessity or the imam is addressing someone in the audience or addressing the audience out of necessity which is outside of the subject of the khutbah so if it's out if it's a necessity then uh, the, and there's maslaha in it then this is permissible as we mentioned from another hadith And this is also evidenced through a hadith when a Bedouin came into the masjid and he was complaining to the Prophet ﷺ during the khutbah. Another benefit of this hadith is that some of the ulama, they make the exception regarding uh, a person who, if people are unable to hear the khutbah, meaning they're far away, it's a situation, there's no microphone or speaker, you know, there's no speaker or whatever, and the people are far away and they cannot hear the khutbah at all. Then in this situation, due to being far away from the khutbah or what have you, then they should remain, but they should not just keep silent without hearing the message, but rather they should busy themselves with reading the Qur'an or making dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as for the person who can hear the khutbah, then they must keep silent. And they should not be busy with anything else. 
and they should not busy anyone else with being uh, making noise or disturbing the people by reading or making vicar or anything else. These are some of the benefits of this hadith. And it illustrates for us the importance of avoiding the avoiding kalam or avoiding speaking during the khutbah and that it's very serious. We must be very cautious. And we have to ask Allah the Almighty for everything good. And may Allah accept our all of our ibadah, our jumwas, our fasting, our all of our acts of ibadah and forgive all our shortcomings and all of our sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.